Welcome to Skinner and Chalmers Weekly Roast. Today, the principal's guide to horoscopes, a skeptical take on the zodiac. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to this week's edition of Skinner and Chalmers Weekly Roast. As always, I'm Superintendent Chalmers, and by my side is my good old partner, Principal Seymour Skinner. Hey there, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Skinner and Chalmers Weekly Roast. Today, we're going to talk about something that I think is just a bunch of hooey. Oh, what's got you so skeptical? Gossip magazines. I mean, come on, who really believes the stuff that is written inside such magazines? Ah, uh, yeah. I was reading a tabloid the other day. I think it's called My Free Time, and I couldn't help but notice that quite a lot of stories just seems to be made up. Ah, uh, don't even get me started, Seymour. These ridiculous headlines are just a way to sell magazines and attract attention. A close friend says he heard from another friend that blah, blah, blah. It's all total nonsense in most of the cases. Exactly. And have you noticed how they always seem to be talking about the royals? Like Prince William spotted with a mysterious woman like, Who cares? I know, right? It's like they're trying to make up for lack of real journalism. I mean, where are the hard-hitting investigative pieces? The exposes on corruption and scandals? No, instead we get Kate Middleton's secret love child or something ridiculous like that. It's all just a big game to them. And you know what really gets me is how people take this stuff seriously. I mean, I've seen folks actually believing these stories. And my grandma was one of them. Oh, yes. I recently heard an older gentleman on the train say, well, I would never have thought that this German host for a children's series called Peter Lustig hates children. So please, really, that's just stumbug. He never hated any children. It was just a quote taken out of context. Oh, yes, I remember that scandal. He just said that he didn't like it when children were dragged in front of the camera and have to repeat scene after scene just because something wasn't perfect. This is also a burden for the little ones. Right. And what had those gossip magazines made of it? The reputation of a great TV presenter destroyed for entire generations because of false quotes. That's not journalism. That's just lying and making money. Oh, yes. I don't blame the readers. The publishers have a responsibility, especially when it comes to media. But, well, or... unfortunately, that's nothing new. That's true, but I can only warmly recommend that everyone check their sources, do some research on the internet, and don't take anything at face value that's written in gossip magazines. Oh, yes. One problem is that when we believe things, we only add fuel to the fire. That brings them money and attention. Right. And if this is taken to extremes over and over again, well, I mean, we know about the case of Princess Diana. Public figures generate legitimate interest, yes, but respecting their boundaries and privacy is just as important. I agree with you, Chalmers, but, well, hang on, I still buy magazines like that sometimes. What, Skinner? How could you betray me so terribly? I feel a dagger in the back of justice and quality journalism. An unbelievable heaviness that is saddened by the lightness that once existed between the two of us. A clouded world, a dystopia in the eye of the storm, a rose that crumbles to dust. Well, you don't have to be quite so dramatic, darling. Laughs. I just wanted to be a bit theatrical. After all, I was working on my role in a play. You've hit the nail on the head, Chalmers. But yes, I admit... I do buy those magazines from time to time because they always have these funny and interesting horoscopes in them. Oh my, the next topic where I unfortunately have to disagree. No offense, and I'm sorry if I'm destroying your world, but I don't believe in horoscopes at all. I'm a man of science, not pseudoscience. Yo, come on, Chalmers. You can't deny that there's something fascinating about it all. The idea of a mysterious force guiding our destinies. No way, Seymour. You can't change my mind. I mean, have you ever seen any real evidence to back up these claims? Well, they are very often right, you have to admit. 
Yeah, because they are written in such a generalized way that they apply to pretty much everyone out there. You have to admit, this is also a form of art. Reluctantly, yes. Well, if you don't believe in horoscopes, but I think they're great, maybe we can agree on a compromise. Well, I'm all ears. Well, actually, I was thinking about this the other day, and it got me wondering, what if we created our own horoscopes? You know, for fun. That way, we both get our way. I still have hope from horoscopes, and you Chalmers, as a true man of science, can co-determine them, co-write them. Creating our own horoscopes was also a wonderful suggestion from one of our listeners, Rachel Rock 7 <sighs> Thank you for that funny topic. I hope I can convince our old, sometimes grumpy Chalmers to step in and give it a shot. Um, that's not a bad idea. What did you have in mind? I was thinking we could make up our own signs and, like, what if? Ares is actually just a bunch of reckless daredevils who always get into trouble. Or Taurus are secretly hoarders of Simoleans. That's not half bad. And what about Gemini? They're always so chatty. Maybe they're just trying to distract from their fear of unspooky gravestones. Exactly. And Cancer. Oh boy, they're just hopeless romantics who write a schmaltzy song for their loved ones every day. Okay, okay. I see where you're going with this, and I quite like it. So we just make up our own rules and characteristics for each sign? That's it. And then we could share them on the podcast. Well, why not? It'll be a fun little exercise in creativity. But what about the actual signs themselves? The real ones with their dates and stuff? Don't worry about it. We can just make up our own. Just an optimist, Seymour. All right, let's do this. But we have to promise ourselves not to take it too seriously. Deal. And I've already started working on some of the signs. Want to hear them? Uh, yeah, yeah. What you got so far? Well, for Ares, you are a bold and fearless individual who will undoubtedly get into at least three awkward situations in the lift with your superiors. And if that doesn't happen, don't worry. We'll just blame it on Sonic from next door. That's great. And what about Taurus? They're always so practical. Ah, uh, yes. Something like, you will spend most of your time collecting dust bunnies under the couch and wondering why you did it. But hey, at least they'll be organized. Okay, I like that one. I imagine such a collection of dust bunnies would be cute. What about Scorpio? They're always so intense. Oh, yes. You will stop at nothing to get what you want. Unless there's a sale on shoes, then all bets are off. That's perfect. And Gemini? They're always talking about... Uh, yes. You'll talk so much next month that you forget your own name and the password to your Netflix account. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere here. These are really good horoscopes. If they were in the magazine, even I would buy them. Now, what about Lil's? Oh, boy. They're the kings of drama. You'll turn any conversation with your friends into a soap opera within five minutes. Don't forget to bring enough boxes of tissues. That's so true. And have you ever met someone who just has to be the center of attention? Like our neighbor Master Chief? Yeah, his screams in the neighborhood get indeed a loss of attention. And he mentioned it gets old fast. But hey, at least Chief is consistent. All right, then let's get Creative again for Virgo? Uh, yes. You'll spend hours organizing your sock drawer. Or trying to, because you're too distracted from boring yourself by doing that. That's so true. I know someone like that. At least this person is not constantly burning the simplest dishes. Or dishes that aren't even cooked. And what about Libra? They're always... Oh, boy. They're the ultimate peacemakers. So we could something like... In the event of unrest or any political tensions, simply go to those responsible in person. You will spoon their ears with offers of peace for so long that those responsible ones will voluntarily leave their post after two sentences from you. And voila, world peace solve. That's hilarious, Skinner. I didn't realize you had such a sarcastic, unbridled tongue. Oh, Chalmers. If you only knew what I've been mumbling to myself in the kitchen while you've been waiting in the dining room, knowing nothing. Oh, you mean those constant curses coming out of your kitchen? 
or you talking to yourself about the damn burnt food, or the blaming of complete bystanders for your incompetence, or the detailed development of some doomed to fail plan on how you can make me believe to eat a cheap substitution, or the loud cheering because you saw some random next possible shop outside the window offering a totally non-edible ingredient, or your plans on blaming me for your burned dinner, or the random British voices speaking in a higher-pitched voice that is actually even lower than before? Um, so, you know, I, um, well, excuse me for a second. Well, of course. <sighs> that was wonderful. Good time was had by all. Now I'm pooped. Yes, I should be. Good lord, we forgot to talk about the horoscope for Sagittarius. Ah, yes, I have something in mind. You will try to set a cross, country skiing world record, but without skis. But blame it on the instructor. Okay, that's good one. What about Capricorn? They're always... Oh, boy. They're control freaks who will micromanage their cat's food portions. One gram too much and the whole meal has to be prepared again. That's so true. And Aquarius? That's a tough one, maybe. You'll invent a new language and then forget how to speak it. Or you buy an aquarium next week, but forget the water. Okay, that one's out of this world. What about pisses? They're always... I know. They're hopeless romantics who will write a love song for their toaster. Toaster, oh toaster, you beautiful electrics. I wish I had a toast as crispy and delicious as a piece of dry sticks. That's not half bad. And what about the rest for them? Well, you'll spend most of your time trying to cook the perfect suffle and then set it on fire. Okay, that was a classic. I think we've got enough for now. Not quite yet. We completely forgot to talk about our own star signs. We might want to rethink our creations there when we determine our own destiny, don't you think? Well, for someone who believes in it, yes, I don't believe in it at all. But I know that horoscopes like this give you hope and make you feel positive. Even though we couldn't be more different in this respect, I still try to take an interest in your interest. At least, give it a try. That's so thoughtful of you. Thank you so much, honey. You really are an angel here on Earth today, and the best sweetheart I could ever imagine. Ow. Thanks, Skinner, or should I say Cancer, you know, your zodiac sign. That's right, Chalmers, and you, my dear Sagittarius, are about to get a cosmic schooling. Oh, please, as a Sagittarius, I'm naturally skeptical of anything that isn't grounded in fact. But let's hear it, Skinner. What does the universe have in store for a Cancer like you? According to my horoscope... This week I'll face challenges at work, but find comfort in my hobbies. You know, cooking is my passion. And burning things is your specialty. Now, now, my burnt creme brulee had a rustic charm. Anyway, my horoscope also says I should be cautious with new ventures. So, no, experimenting with suffles this week. Probably a wise decision. As for me, Sagittarius is known for their love of adventure and travel. My horoscope says I'll embark on a new journey. Did a journey, you say? Planning a trip to Mimifield Mall? I was thinking more along the lines of exploring the untouched realms of the internet. Just be sure not to get lost in the Meme Labyrinth. It's a treacherous place. I have my guide, Sonic. That hedgehog knows his way around a Meme or two. That's how young people are. They know their way around pop culture. We old hares don't know much about it. True. Back to the horoscopes. My Cancerian tendencies also suggest a focus on family. Maybe I should invite our neighbors for a dinner party and we can celebrate our friendship with a round of bingo. Are you sure you want to risk another culinary disaster in front of Echo and Yugi? Don't you worry. I'll make sure Cosmo isn't the only one enjoying the meal this time. Yeah, bring the fire extinguisher just in case. Always the Boy Scout, aren't you, Chalmers? What's the rest of your horoscope say? It mentions something about reconnecting with an old friend. Maybe it's time I visit my old university buddy, Master Chief. When he brought Cosmo and Gizmo back, I only spoke to him briefly. We've both changed a bit since the old days and have grown apart. 
That sounds like a plan. He can also tell us stories from his days in space combat. Or we could just play some Halo. You know, get into the real spirit of things. Sounds like a blast. Just remember my Cancerian intuition is rarely wrong. So if I say duck, you duck. Noted. And if my Sagittarian foresight says you're about to burn the lasagna, I'll make sure to order pizza. Deal. Let's wrap this up. Any final thoughts on our horoscopes? Just that while they might be fun, we shouldn't take them too seriously. Life's too unpredictable for that. Wow, in any case, I have to admit, Seymour, I didn't expect this episode to be so entertaining. Ah, yes. And don't forget the horoscope for Yugi from next door. You will finally master the art of dueling with a deck of cards. That's perfect. I think we should do this kind of episode more often. Really? You like this format? Absolutely. It's hilarious and also thought-provoking. I'm glad to hear that, Chalmers. I could make one for myself, if you like. Shaka! Go ahead, Seymour. I am bitten by an angry mob of undead teachers in the front garden, but I am immune to the zombie disease and will instead form a union for the undead teachers and initiate rehabilitation measures. The undead teachers realize that the zombie disease is irrational and eating brains is a cliché. In the end, everyone will be happy working at school again, even if they might look a bit frazzled and children will have to get used to it. This has nothing to do with the existing budget cuts and my attempt to hire anyone I can as a teacher. Employing zombie teachers that teach children. Only in Memmefield, Skinner. Only in Memmefield. Ow. I have to admit, Seymour, even though we were just making fun of horoscopes, I didn't find it that boring. Uh, see? Even the superintendent can be entertained. And what about you, Chalmers? Did you ever think you'd be talking about horoscopes with a headmaster? No way. But hey, at least we made it fun and lighthearted. I must admit these horoscopes were quite entertaining. It just goes to show that anyone can come up with amusing predictions, even if they are completely absurd. Absurdity, my dear Chalmers, is often the best kind of truth. Speaking of which, let's move on to something else that is connected with horoscopes. Life can sometimes feel like a roller coaster ride, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, Seymour. We all have our highs and lows, our moments of triumph and defeat. But it's essential to remember that we're in charge of our destiny. Our stars don't dictate our lives. We do. But I, uh, I can more than imagine that there are moments when faith and hope are a wonderful chain. Of course, there are things that are sometimes out of our control. Even as a man of science, I admit that faith and hope can sometimes be the strongest shoulder to lean on. Exactly, Chalmers. And don't forget, each of us possesses unique strengths and talents that, when harnessed, can help us overcome any challenge. Just like a superhero, if you will. Now, that's a hilarious thought, Skinner. Imagine Superman looking up at the sky and saying, well, according to today's horoscope, I won't be able to save Earth from certain doom. Precisely. So, instead of relying on some mystical force or a zodiac sign, why not trust in yourself and your abilities? After all, isn't that the real power within each of us? You're absolutely right, Skinner. We should never underestimate ourselves or our capabilities. Every day presents opportunities for growth and success, no matter what the stars might say. And remember, Chalmers' life isn't always fair. Sometimes we get dealt a lousy hand, but that doesn't mean we have to fold. Instead, we can use those challenges to grow stronger and wiser. Yes, indeed. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, we can emerge from adversity stronger than ever before. Exactly. So, my dear friend, let's remind everyone listening today that they are capable, strong, and resilient beings. No matter what challenges they face, they have the power within themselves to overcome them. Beautifully said, Skinner. At the end of the day, it's not about the stars aligning for us, but rather it's about how we align ourselves for love and success. Bravo. Chalmers! That was a fantastic summary of our message. Now, let's wrap up this episode by reminding everyone that, yes, life can throw curveballs at us, but we are the ones holding the bat. I really like that quote. That's the spirit and speaking of spirits, I have an idea for our next podcast episode. We...
could do something on cooking disasters. Oh boy, that sounds like a recipe for disaster. But hey, it's always fun to reminisce about those times when we tried to cook and ended up with burnt offerings. Exactly. And who knows, maybe our listeners will even share their own stories. It'll be a real laugh. Riot. All right, then let's get creative again for the next episode. But before we go, I want to say something serious. And what is it? And you know, Seymour, I am so grateful that we are allowed to do all this here. It's so wonderful that we have a small community and there's nothing better than reading your comment. Thanks to all the thumbs up podcast ideas and so on. We are all very happy about it. Indeed. And remember, folks, you are wonderful. Don't let anyone take you down. I mean, anyone can write their own horoscope. And make fun of them, too? That's right. And don't forget to have a sense of humor about it all. Because, let's face it, life can be unpredictable. But with the right attitude and mindset, we can overcome any obstacle. Hey, so go out there and make your own luck. And don't forget to laugh at yourself when things get tough. That's right. And who knows? Maybe our listeners will start writing their own horoscopes, too. And maybe they'll even share them with us. That would be a real treat. That's true. Well, that's all for today on Skinner and Chalmers Weekly Roast. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, don't take your horoscopes too seriously, unless you're trying to cook a suffle. Until next time, this is Superintendent Chalmers and Principal Seymour Skinner signing off. And remember, folks, never burn your food. Keep cooking and chatting. Stay curious, stay creative, and above all, stay awesome. Bye. See you next week.